Hello, this is a review for if you're doing the alternate test for multiplication and division. So you're going to be dividing whole numbers instead of working with multiplying and dividing um, decimals. So let's go ahead and get this set up. 22 times 13. Just do 22 times 13. Like this. And we're going to start down here in this bottom corner. We're going to multiply up. Then we're going to multiply it by the other number. And just grab another pin here. Then we're going to go over into the other time slot. That's similar. Take a different color. Then we're going to come over to the 10 spot. We're going to multiply this way. And then we're going to multiply up like that. That's our pattern. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Now before we start multiplying over here, we have to put a placeholder down because we're multiplying. We're going to say 1 times 2, but it's really 10 times 2, right? So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Add these up. 6 plus 0 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. And we've got the 2 there. 286. I think I'll just do all the multiplication ones first. So 514 times 511 times 4. So always put the big number on top. 511 times 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 4 is 20. You just write it down like that because we're right at the end there. It makes sense. 4 times 500 would be 2,000. So 4 times 511, 20, 44. All right, the next one, 41 times 41. Again, we're going to have a trade in this one here, but it'll be at the end. 1 times 4, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Again, we have to zero down because we're multiplying from this tens column here. 4 times 1 is 4. Here's the trade. 4 times 4 is 16. So we can just put down 16 because we're at the end. We don't have to carry anything. 1 plus 0 is 1. 4 plus 4 is 8. 6, 1. 1681. All right. 30, 13 times 36. Again, we're going to put the big number on top. 36. We'll do 13. So this time we will have an interior trade. And here it is right here. 3 times 6 is 18. Here's the 8. And here's the 10. I call it the teen. 3 times 6 is 18. Here's the 8. Here's the teen. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus that 1 is 10. Okay. We're multiplying from the 10s column. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Add these babies up. 430, 468. Nice. All right. Now I'm going to do a little division work. So 72 divided by 3. Let's just first review. This is the same as 72 divided by 3, which is the same as 72 divided by 3. All right. So we're going to go ahead and make our division bracket. And we're going to put 72 inside. And we're going to put the 3 outside. Now we just start asking questions. Does 3 go into 7? Yes. 3 goes into 7 two times. Some people like to put a little multiplication sign up there. That's fine too. 3 times 2 is 6. We subtract 7 minus 6. We have 1 left over. We'll bring this 2 down. Now we have 12. Does 3 go into 12? Yeah, 3 goes into 12 four times. 4 times 3. Oops. 4 times 3 is 12. Yep. We subtract it out. 12 minus 12 is 0. So we zeroed it out. This is our quotient. That's our answer to our division problem 24 times. All right, now we have 238 divided by 7. I'm going to write it this way so you get used to seeing it. I'm trying to pound that fraction bar through your head. So we have 238, and we are going to divide by 7. So we start asking those questions. Does 7 fit into 2? No, it doesn't. Fits into 23, though. We could do that 7 times. Sorry, we could do that um, 3 times. There you go. It's the worst looking three I've ever seen. Um, three times seven is 21. 21 minus 23. When we subtract that, we have two left over. Bring that down. We have 28. Does seven go into 28? Yeah, seven goes into four times. Four times seven is 28. 
and we zero it out. So our answer, our quotient up here is 34. All right, now we've got 180 divided by 15. 180 divided by 15. There's one little tricky thing in here. Watch what happens here. Does 15 fit into 1? No. Does 15 fit into 18? Yes, it does. It fits in there one time. Put the 15 down, we subtract out, we have 30 or 3 left over. Bring down the 0, and there's that 30 I was talking about. <clears throat> does 15 fit into 30? Yes, it does. Two times. 2 times 15 is 30. And you subtract it out, 30 minus 30 is 0. Be careful. Every number should have, every digit, once you start up there, should have a number over the top of it. The tricky thing is that I could see myself already knowing that this was 12 times 15 and forgetting to put the 2 up there because I could see it coming. I knew it was going to go in there one time and I'd have 30 left over and there would be two groups of 15. But you've got to write it down up there again because, again, that's your quotient. That's your answer. All right. This one is not going to work out evenly, so we're going to have a remainder, and I'll show you how to deal with that. We have 233 divided by 5. Let me write this out this way, 233 divided by 5, just so you get used to seeing it. Same thing, so let's put the 233 in. 233 divided by 5. Does 5 fit into 2? No, sir. Does 5 fit into 23? Yes, ma'am. goes in there four times. 5 times 4 is 20. When we subtract that out, 23 minus 20, you're going to have 30 left over. Let's bring that down. 33. Well, hey, we know 5 is not going to go into 33. It's got to end in a 5 or a 0. 5 is going to work. But we still do it anyway. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. Let's see. It would be 6 times would be 30. So 6 times 5 is going to be 30. We subtract it out. We've got 3. Now, I know that you're used to writing 46 remainder three but that's really really elementary like um, in middle school we're either going to divide that out and keep going um, that's what the other kids are doing um, it, when dividing decimals they're going to continue going with that or we write that as 46 with three parts left out of five we write it with a fraction here's where I got that number the remainder is the numerator and five is the denominator. Let me restate it. It goes in there 46 times and there's three left out of five. Okay? Good luck.